Good evening guys, I'm back and saw the class of 92 with my experiment on Football Manager 2015. Now in part 4, Jurgen Klopp got sacked after winning the FA Cup and finishing 4th in the Premier League, so who was going to take over the helm at Old Trafford? And there is your answer, it's Marcelino. So what he did was spend 38 million on Kevin Campbell and he sold 33 million for Luciano Vieto. Bringing in 111 million worth, selling 91 million worth. And a brief look at his stats. Of course, he didn't do much as a player. Manager of Villarreal, Sevilla, Racing, Zaragoza, Racing again, Recreativo, amongst others. Okay, so let's go to the Premier Division. Now, with the class in 92 involved, they have finally done it. Manchester United are again the champions of England. For the first time in this experiment, this is part five, they have won a cup here and there, but they've never won the league. They've been finishing third and fourth continuously. So we're going to go right to the squad, straight into the under-21s, and see how they're getting on. Okay, first up, Phil Neville. The Phil Neville has been punted on loan to Swansea, in the Premier League, making 22 appearances, managed by Jamie Carragher. Now he's on £15,250 a week, valued at £5.75 million. He has three first-team England caps, so he's the first one out of the five Englishmen, out of the six of the Class of 92 members, to get England caps. He's got 20 under-21 caps for the country. So he made 26 appearances in total, 4 in the cup for Swansea, getting a total average of 6.93. And he's looking quite comfortable. He's been put out on loan twice now, having previously gone to Middlesbrough for 8 games. But he's got very solid stats, and he looks comfortably a good Premier League player. So, with Manchester United now being champions and probably having a monster squad that we will look at very shortly... Is he going to come back and get involved in Marcelino's first team? I'm not so sure. It's a tough one because do you change a championship winning team? We will find out in part 6 of the experiment. But he's got, now got a continental reputation and known as an enthusiastic fullback, age 21. So he says, I'm not bad season on loan at Swansea, but picking up England owners is Phil Neville's main feature of this episode. He is contracted to Manchester United until 2022. So plenty of time to get involved in the first team. So the next player we'll look at is probably one I, I and you predicted that wouldn't do the best. Nicky Butt. He has been put on loan to West Ham who are in the Premier League and managed by Andre Villas-Boas. He had 14 appearances for them. 12 in the league, 2 in the cup and 2 substitute appearances as well. Picking up a 6.87 average. Valued at 1.6 million, age 21, he's had plenty of time to develop now. He's a tenacious defensive midfielder, 11 under 21 caps and 3 goals for England. Solid stats, but no manager really seems interested in Man United at taking him on and giving him a chance. He's had Alex Ferguson, Jurgen Klopp and Marcelino, and not one of them have really given him much chance. Picking up only 17 appearances for Manchester United first team in 5 seasons now, so... He's not looking too good, and my prediction is next season he would not be given a chance under Marcelino. Remember guys, I have not recorded ahead. I just record and I upload, I record and I upload. I don't record ahead, so I have no idea what's happened. He's got one year left on his contract at Old Trafford. It doesn't look too good for Nicky Butt, but who knows. Next we'll go to Paul Scholes, another one who was kind of struggling. He has been punted on loan to Bristol City in the Championship, being managed by Steve Cotterell. He's an enthusiastic midfielder, valued at 5 to 5k. That has been pretty much static for five seasons now. He's got no under-21 caps, he's got no full caps. He's on 9k per week, and he's got two years left on his contract. He's got decent stats with a 6 Point nine two average in a championship side, getting only 2 goals and 10 assists. It's doom and gloom for the ginger maestro. I don't think he'll be doing anything. For me, 
the worst out of the bunch so far, no doubt. So next, it's a bit of a surprise actually, from breaking through last season into the first squad, looking brilliant. I cannot believe David Beckham got sent on loan to Southampton in the Premier League to play under Steve Clark. It's just a massive shock. He did have 32 appearances in total, including Continental Games and in the league. But those Continental Games, I'm not sure if he played a part at Man United or he played them all at Southampton and they were in Europe. I'm not too sure. But he's got fantastic stats. He's a tireless midfielder, of course playing on the right. In 32 appearances, he's got 1 goal and 13 assists, but racking up a massive 7.47 average. Valued at 11 million, still uncapped by the full squad, but 11 under 21 caps and 2 goals. And he's now on a massive 65 grand per week. Now he played in the first team at Manchester United under Jurgen Klopp, but Marcelino's obviously not given him that chance. Contracted till 2023 and another 4 seasons, I fully expect him to be involved in the first team next season. He has got monster stats and somebody that I would not be leaving out. That's for certain. So I'm pretty sure that's it from the 21s. Now we will go to the first team squad. So we're going to go to Gary Neville. Now, unbelievably, Gary Neville has been loaned on to Cardiff last season, but this season promoted to the first team and played almost 40 games in total, getting 7.47 average, 4 goals, 9 assists. But what is really massive for him being 21, a key player and enthusiastic fullback is Marcelino has named him vice captain of Manchester United age 21. Yet he's still only on 24k per week. 15 caps for the under 21 side but 0 for the full side and valued at a massive 10.75 million. I've had a glance at the next guy we're going to look at which is of course Ryan Giggs but I'm just going to say now that Gary Neville's the one that stole the show in episode 5. He's come on leaps and bounds and he is the one that's made the biggest impression on me in part 5. Whereas the last episode it was David Beckham and the episodes before it was Ryan Giggs. So he looked fantastic for a fullback. I expect him to go on, get a big, big contract and get massive value in there and England honours. So he's got a contract for another 3 years but that will probably be extended, no doubt, after winning the title with Manchester United. So the final one we will look at is, of course, the current Manchester United assistant manager. He's only been at Manchester United. He's the only one who hasn't been on loan to any other club. Age 21 on £47,000 per week, 11 Welsh caps, 2 goals. And he picked up 20 appearances and got 7.2 average in this season, which tells me he may have been injured. I'm not too sure. But that value, guys, 22 million. He's now an enthusiastic midfielder and a rotation of squad status within the club, a continental reputation. Now, the last episode you've seen that I mentioned three or four of them were named as Wonder Kids. Right here, you can see enthusiastic midfielder. That has obviously moved on from Wonder Kids because the guys are 21 now, they're moving on. In another couple of years, they will be able to tutor players, so they can't really be called Wonder Kids anymore. So that time is done. So Ryan Giggs looks fantastic. He's been very solid. His value keeps going up and up and up. But the surprising one for me is that Phil Neville's the only one got England caps out of five of them. Maybe his lone move to Swansea sealed that because I'm not sure why the others haven't got England caps. So as you can see here, Gary Neville is the vice captain. And I'm sure he will be next season having Manchester United won at the Premier League with this team. The top six or seven are quite players you'd expect to be there. They started there. The big name sign ins, of course, are Musashi, Otamendi, Saul, Kevin Campbell for just under 40 million, Davy Klassen, Andre Gomez, Domenico Berardi, Alvaro Morata, and Salomon Rondon. 
So the tactics that Manchester United employed to win the league is pretty much a flat 4-4-2, which tells me Gary Neville could play right back, Phil Neville left back or centre back, Nicky Button, Paul Scholes in the middle, Ryan Giggs on the left, David Beckham on the right. There'd be no problem to fit them all in. So something I'm going to do, which I never actually planned until this morning when I thought of it, once I get to, like, I think part 9 after part 9 is recorded, I am going to take over the class of 92 for one season and one season only. I am going to control all those players, should they all still be there, and they haven't reached pastures new. And I am going to see what I can do with them, and if I can win the quadruple, the treble, the double, or just the Premier League title, we'll see what I can do. But the main aim of that will be to make sure that all players are still there, and all players are going to be playing in that season I take over. So it's been a very successful part five of the experiment for Manchester United in particular. Some of the players, some not so, two are not doing too too, too well in button schools. Beckham and Phil Neville are doing okay, but Ryan Giggs has been solid and Gary Neville has taken the lead and become a rock solid player. Those are the two, the others have got a catch. Can they do it? Can Marcelino introduce them into the club? Will they get games? Find out in part six, guys. That will be released early next week. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.